Okay, so we have been hypothesis testing for the last couple days. We've learned the ins and outs of hypothesis testing, and then we looked at hypothesis testing for the mean um, using our big Z score, and then we even introduced the big T score. Um, but that's what we focused on so far. But just like we were doing in the past, anything that we can do for the mean, we can also do for proportion. So the next section here is hypothesis testing for the proportion. Now, there's really only one uh, major difference here is that instead of having means and standard deviations, we're gonna have proportions running around. So we just need to um, make sure that we remember the easy peasy Z score and then run through a couple examples, but you're gonna see the process is just the same. It's just with P rather than mu. So again, let's just remind ourselves our test statistic, which is going to be our Z score, is Z equals P half minus P all over, well, you know what, this pen is not gonna cut it. The square root of PQ over N. So we have used that formula um, a number of times, so that shouldn't be new to anybody. Um, like I said, other than that, the problems kind of maintain the same, the same format, everything is the same, except the z-score that we're gonna be using. So let me see if I can find a pen here that works well. So this blue pen works well. Okay, so we're ready just to do an example. So let's say 81% of people eat ham on Easter. Apparently this blue pen's not gonna work out well either. We're running through our pens today. Let's try this blue pen. Nope, we'll see what we can get out of it. I think this proportion, yep, not even four words. Great, let's see about this one. Is different for Americans. Sorry guys, get to the end of the semester and we're running out of pens. Okay, let's see what we've got next. It's different, let's go with green. For Americans. of 192 Americans finds 79.2% eat ham on Easter. Test at alpha equals 0 0.05. Okay, so sorry about the little pen catastrophe there. So let's read through it again. 81% of people eat ham on Easter, again, in my made up land, right? I think this proportion is different for Americans. A sample of 192 Americans finds that 79.2% eat ham on Easter. And I wanna test this claim at alpha equals 0.05. So if you look back at what we were doing last time and then what you're doing here, notice that there's no mean and there's no standard deviation given, is there? So everything here has got percentages on it and proportions. So this is definitely a proportion problem. But other than it being a proportion problem, everything else goes the same. So our first step, whether proportion or mean, is to write our hypotheses. So we've got our null hypothesis and our alternate. Now the thing to remember is that we're studying P and not mu. So for this first one, our null, we just go with our top statement there, P is equal to 0.81, okay? P is equal to 81% or P is equal to 0.81. Now, I think the proportion, this proportion is different for Americans, which means when we write our ultimate hypothesis, we're gonna use a not equal. 
And that means that we have a two-tail test, doesn't it? Okay, which hopefully we remember that that means that we're going to need a 2p in the end. Our p-value is going to need to be doubled, but we'll get to that in a minute. So hypotheses first, then we need our test stat, so our test statistic. We got our formula over here. So we're going to go p-hat minus p. Well, p-hat was this guy that came from our sample, right? So we're going to start with 0.792 minus our original p, 0.81, all over big old square root, and we're going to put 0.81 under there. The complement will then be 0.19, and we'll divide the whole thing by 192. Okay, so remember, top first, hit enter, and then divide by square root, and just put the whole entire thing in, and it should pop right out. I got a z-score of negative 0.64. Okay, so a, a small z-score, but um, a z-score nonetheless. Okay. All right, now, if we draw ourselves that little graph just as our visual, so a negative 0.64 is over to this side, and remember that the p-value is represented by a tail. So this is our p-value. And we know how to find that. That's where we're gonna go to our calculator and we're going to, I guess we can get from this right now. So we're going to find that p-value. We're gonna go normal CDF. And then we need our endpoints of negative 10,000 and negative 0.64. Okay, and this is where you know we're dealing with proportion. The sample size is large enough. We can we can assume that this is a mean going on here, or I mean a mean. Sorry, not a mean. We can assume this is normal going on here. So we're using the normal CDF. And then hopefully what pops out of your calculator is. 0.2611. So our P, capital P, is 0.2611. But we said that we actually needed a 2P. So 2P would be, if we multiply that by 2, 0.5222. Now, I don't know what ever problem you're doing, but if you come up with a p-value, and remember that p-value is the probability of making that type one error. If you come up with a p-value that's over 50%, and there's an over 50% chance that I screwed this up, is that sounding good to anybody? And it absolutely is not. So our 2p is much greater than our alpha, okay? So there's no way we showed what we were trying to show, okay? That's just huge, a huge amount of error there. So we definitely have to keep the null. And then um, remember that we have to write a sentence here and our sentence here will look like um, there is not enough evidence to support So remember, when, when we didn't show, we didn't prove what we wanted to prove, our sentence can be short and sweet. It's just there's not enough evidence to support the claim. That's it, okay? We don't have to get more into it or anything. Again, you're basically telling people, go back to the drawing board, try this problem again, or, or maybe just give up, okay? If you, because, <clears throat> because we weren't able to, to prove it or show it beyond a reasonable doubt in this example. Okay. All righty. So there's one example. Let's see what we have for the next example. Oh, a little bit different setup on this one. So let me erase. Oh, great, the green pen doesn't erase real well. Okay. All right, let's see what we got. 
let's see if this black pen works. Oh, the black works. Yay, I didn't know there was a black pen here. All right, so this next one says, I believe a majority of people believe in the tooth fairy. Ninety-eight people are sampled and sixty-one are found to bleed. Test at alpha equals 0 0.01, and then it also says here the data is normally distributed. So in this one, um, they are giving us that information of it being normally distributed, which is nice. Okay, so this problem, this problem is not as nice as the last problem because it is not nearly as clear what you're doing here. First off, there's no mean or standard deviation. Everybody agree? Definitely no mean or standard deviation. But I also don't see a percentage. I don't see the word proportion. I don't see any of that. And that's because in this problem, it's all kind of built in with the wording. So. What I want you to see here is this word majority. When we're talking about a majority, a majority is a proportion, okay? So it's built in here that there's a proportion there. So we can make a little note. Let's make a note over to the side here. So the majority, whenever you see majority, that means greater than 50%, so greater than 50%. And if you're doing a problem and it happens to say a minority, that is less than 50%. So in this problem, when I said I believe a majority, what I'm saying is I believe greater than 50% or more than 50% of people believe in the tooth fairy. And there is that percentage. So again, even though the percentage isn't in the problem and the word proportion isn't there, this is still a proportion problem. Now, because of that, when we go to write our hypotheses, I've actually, by saying there's a majority, have given you the alternate hypothesis. I am saying that I believe P is greater than 0.5. Okay? That's the way a majority would look. Now, that means our null hypothesis can just be equal to 0.5. You don't even need the less than, just the equal. So P is equal to 0.5, P is greater than 0.5. So there are our, our hypotheses. Now, the ne next thing that would come would be our test statistic. But when we go to find our test statistic, the test statistic, we now have a P, but it requires a P hat. And I, I don't see another proportion. Well, I didn't even see one proportion in this problem, so I certainly don't see another one just jumping out at me. But when you read it, it says 98 people are sampled and 61 found to believe in the tooth fairy. There is our P hat. There is our proportion. We just have to build it. So we have to say 61 out of 98 and figure out what that equals. Where's my calculator? And I got 0.622. I hope that sounds good to everybody. Okay, so we had to build our p hat. So in this one, we kind of had to build the whole problem. The wording was all there, but nothing was actually just given to us. We built it all. Now we can go for our z score. So we'll start with our p hat, which is 0.622, and we'll subtract our mean. And then we're going to, oh, geez, I don't know what's wrong with me. Not our mean. We're going to subtract our P. 
and then we're going to do the square root of p, 0.5, times q, which will always also be 0.5, and we'll divide it by our sample size. Now be careful, our sample size is the whole sample, so it's the 98. And if you put that into your calculator, hopefully you get 2.42. Good to everybody. Alrighty. So um, if we want to make our graph again, 2.42 is over here. Shading the tail for our p-value. Now we don't need 2p or anything like that, right? Because it's just a greater than, so we just, whatever pops out of the calculator, that's our p-value. So we're gonna do our normal CDF. Uh, we're gonna go from the 2.42 all the way to our 10,000. Put that in bold calculator and Hopefully what pops out is 0 0.0077. And remember that's our P value. So P equals 0 0.0077. Okay. Now, who do we compare that to? 0 0.0077 gets compared to our alpha, right? So we can say 0 0.0077, that is definitely less than 0 0.01, isn't it? It's not a ton less, but it's less than enough, right? We were allowed a 1% chance of screwing this problem up, and we came in at under a 1% chance of screwing the problem up. So we did a good job. So remember, this is your P, and this is your alpha. So when our P is small, we get to reject the null. And this means there is enough evidence to support the claim. And then remember, when there is enough evidence, when we did a good job, we get to say what the claim was. So there is enough evidence to support the claim that a majority of people believe in the tooth fairy. And then remember, we're supposed to put at alpha equals 0 0.01. So remember that those sentences are very important. And some of you may see now that I have graded your confidence intervals that if you did not include your sentence in your confidence interval, you lost a lot of points. Because remember, this is something that we are now giving to the public. Everything up to this point has been like work behind the scenes, math work. But now we're doing statistical tests that we're going to give to people. And if it do, that sentence doesn't make sense and doesn't have all the information in it, you're not getting credit for it. Okay? Sentence is definitely, definitely key on these. All right. So we did two examples, saw some different wording, um, but basically process is the same. Z-score formula we've worked with before, but you can do that. Normal CDF, you can do that. So you should be good to go on your proportions. All right, I'll see you next time.